Good evening. I'm uh, Alan Joins, Mayor of Winston-Salem. It's my pleasure to call to order this April 4th meeting of the Winston-Salem City Council and ask the city clerk to call the roll, please. Councilmember Larson. Present. Councilmember Clark. Here. Councilmember Mundy. Present. Councilmember Scipio. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Adams. Here. Councilmember Taylor. Present. Councilmember McIntosh. Here. Councilmember Burke. Here. Thank you. As we prepare to go into a moment of silence, I'd like to just uh, Called the names of first Jane Penn, when Councilor Scipio mentioned, who, who's been, who was the vice chair of the African American History um, His Heritage Initiative, passed away, and of course our, our good friend, former Senator Linda Guru, um, wonderful community leader, passed away as well. So let's keep them in our thoughts as we go to a moment of silence. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. And would you join the City Council and me in the Pledge of Allegiance? <coughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Our Sergeant at Arms tonight is Lieutenant Mike Knight. Lieutenant, thank you for being with us tonight. Tonight's agenda uh, is comprised of the uh, following items. There are three zoning petitions. There's a new DO text amendment, and then our we have a, do a need for a closed session. The zoning petitions are listed as public hearings. And when the public hearings are called, persons in the council chamber will be given an opportunity to speak. If there's op uh, opposition to these zoning uh, cases, the uh, proponents and opponents will each be given 15 minutes for presentation and then three minutes for rebuttal. If no one wishes to speak, I'll close the public hearing and the City Council will consider the item. We're televising this meeting live tonight on TV 13 and it will be replayed on Tuesday at 9 a.m. and again Wednesday at 9 p.m. Of course, copies of our agenda as well as videos of previous meetings are always available to the public online at the City's website and just select the Watch Meetings Online option. Ms. Kenny, may we have a uh, first item? <laughs> Item Z1, public hearing on zoning petition of Jones Estate A and W LLC from MH and RS20 to MH-S. Property is located on the north side of High Point Road, east of Glen High Road, located in the southeast ward. Planning board, planning board recommends approval of petition. This item was continued from the August 2nd, September 7th, November 1st, 2021 City Council meetings. Thank you. Um, the Mayor, proponents are here for this. I'm sorry. If I may, I know this, this is a, a abnormal request. I have a need to move this item to the end of the agenda, and that's fine with you and the rest of the council. All right. Without objection, we'll move it to the end of the agenda. Thank you. Mr. Taylor, we'll, we'll come back to this one. So we go to item Z2. Item Z2, public hearing on zoning petition of 3934 Winston-Salem, LLC, from GB-S to GB-S. <laughs> Property is located north of Haynes Mall Boulevard, west of Oxford Station Lane, at the western terminus of Oxford, Oxford Station Way, located in the southwest ward. Planning Board recommends approval of petition. Thank you. Uh, no one has signed up to be heard on this item. Is there anyone in the council chamber who wishes to be heard on this zoning case? All right, seeing no one, I'll declare the public hearing closed, and I recognize Council Member Mundy. I move for approval of one, the statement of consistency for approval of this item, and two, W-3516. Second. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Is there further discussion of this item? Not, do we please uh, vote when your screen comes up? And that passes unanimously. Thank you, Councilor Mundy. Item Z3. Item C3, public hearing on zoning petition of Rejo Torres Patino and Yvette Cuevas Torres from GI and HB to HB. Property is located on the west side of North Patterson Avenue, north of Motor Road, located in the northeast ward. Planning Board recommends approval of petition. Thank you. No one has signed up in opposition to this item. I know Mr. Torres is here if there are any questions. Is there anyone in opposition to this zoning case? All right, seeing no one, I'll declare the public hearing closed and recognize Councilmember Burke. Thank you, Mayor Jones. <clears throat> I move for approval of one, the statement of consistency for approval of this item, and two, W-3517. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion of this item? 
All right, if you would please vote when the item comes before you there. <clears throat> Thank you, that is unanimous. Thank you, Councilmember Burke. Item Z4. Of SB 300, Part 13, decriminalization of certain ordinances recommended by Community Development, Housing, and General Government Committee. Thank you. I'd like to ask our city attorney to just give us just a brief comment about the purpose of this uh, ordinance amendment. May I believe Mr. Murphy is going to uh, provide the presentation right. of this item unless he Very wants good. me to. I'd no, that's fine. To. Mr. Murphy, if you would, please go ahead. <laughs> One of you give me a ass in the butt. <laughs> Thank you. Let's see. Great. Good evening, Mayor Joins, Mayor Pro Tem Adams, and Council Members. I'm here tonight to present UDOCC 16, which is a petition from Planning and Development <coughs> Services staff in conjunction with the City and County Attorney's Offices to amend Sections 6, 8, and 10 of the UDO in response to the North Carolina General Assembly's passage of SB 300 <coughs> Part 13, decriminalization of certain ordinances. In September 2021, the North Carolina General Assembly passed Senate Bill 300, a wide-ranging criminal justice reform bill. Part 13, decriminalization of certain ordinances, details specific situations where development ordinances may not impose criminal penalties, including enforcement of any provisions which draw their legal basis from NCGS 160D, which is the land use enabling statutes for the bulk of the UDO. Planning and Attorney's Office staff reviewed the UDO to determine areas where criminal penalties would need to be removed in order to comply with SB 300. Staff identified four sections that would need modifications listed there, and language that referenced criminal penalties was removed or modified. Staff believes this text amendment will have minimal impact on our ability to enforce UDO standards, as it has been over 20 years since any criminal penalties have been used here. Civil penalties will remain the primary tool for correcting any violation and ensuring compliance with the UDO. After holding a public hearing in February 2022, the Planning Board unanimously recommended approval of UDO CC 16, and the Community Development, Housing, and General Government Committee recommended this amendment to full council at its March meeting. And with that, I'm available for questions. Any questions? Uh, uh, Mayor Pritchett Adams. Yes. Thank you. Could you basically give a sh short definition to the public as to what this is. I mean, we know and we've read it, but anybody else looking or listening to this would say, well, what is it that there, what was the, the original UDO about? And what penalties are they, you know, discontinuing uh, in this new uh, ordinance because of uh, Senate Bill 300? Sure. So Senate Bill 300 said that there were certain provisions in municipal development ordinances that could no longer be criminalized. There was a list of 10 instances as part of the bill. So we went through and looked and found four instances that overlapped. Um, one of them is you cannot criminalize um, violations of the tree ordinance, and we had a reference in there to that. We also had kind of a general reference in our statutes that criminal penalties may be imposed in certain situations that we removed. But again, it was only in these 10 instances. Some of the instances didn't even apply to our UDO. So it was really looking at the overlap between what Senate Bill 300 said we couldn't criminalize and what we might have criminalized in the UDO and removed those instances where appropriate. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank in you. fact, we haven't used it in 20 years. Chris is probably indicative <laughs> that we <laughs> don't really need it. This is a public hearing. No one has signed up to be heard on it, but is there anyone in Council Chamber who would like to be heard on this proposed UDO text amendment? All right, seeing no one, I'll declare the public hearing closed. I recognize the Chairman of the House and General Government Committee, Mayor Pro Tem Adams. This did come from your committee. Thank you, Mayor. I move for approval of one, the statement of consistency for approval of this item, and two, UDO CC. One six. Second. Motion second. Any further discussion? If not, please vote when the item comes up on your screen. 
And that is unanimous. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. So now we're we ready to go back to Z1, Mr. Taylor. All right, very good. We'll go back to Z1. Um, Ms. Kenny, we've already read that into the record, so um, no one has uh, signed up in opposition to that. Is there anyone in opposition? Okay, well, there's some stops. So we'll, we'll hear the, the full case then. Uh, for the proponents, Robert <coughs> Skunk, I think it is. If you would please uh, state your name and address for the record, please. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Mayors of Council. My name is Robert uh, Schunk. I am uh, pleased to be, back, be pleased to be, be pleased to be uh, back before you since uh, our, uh, we first came to you in August of last year. <clears throat> I am the uh, director of entitlements for Stackhouse. Uh, I have tonight with me Eddie Morgan, our North Carolina regional director for our mobile home communities. Ken Miller, president of an investigative security firm and recently retired Greensboro police chief, and uh, Bill Greco, our planner and civil engineer. I want to share with you a little bit about our organization and what we've accomplished at the a and Mobile Home Park in the last two years, and more importantly, recently over the last uh, several months. Um, at Stackhouse, um, let me go to the next slide here. Um, we're, we're not your traditional uh, owner of a mobile home uh, park, what most people might be familiar with over the last uh, you know, several decades. We have, an, we have 47 employees in North Carolina that manage our parks and across uh, the six states we operate in, we have 143 employees. That includes managers, uh, utility and maintenance staff, HR, um, other office leadership positions here in, uh, based in Durham, North Carolina. Um, we are also a diverse real estate group, not only owning and managing uh, mobile home communities. Um, we um, have a commercial real estate arm. We are also an entitling, permitting and also have under construction over 2,500 single family, townhome and apartment units across North Carolina. Uh, and those are included in master plan communities and smaller communities providing a diverse uh, housing and variety of uh, price points. Um, you know, at Stackhouse, when we go into a new community, uh, when we buy a, a new mobile home park, a lot of the times they're sometimes run down. Some of them are very nice. For the ones that are run down, uh, we typically uh, will clean them up, remove the people that don't belong there. Any new home we bring in, or any home we bring in is a new home. You know, this is an example here of a new home. You know, we focus on home ownership, creating communities, and we do not rent any of our mobile homes to folks. So building uh, ownership is, uh, provides a you know, more in quality uh, community. In the last two years, we've added uh, 384 homes to our mobile home park uh, portfolio. And in North Carolina alone, we've added 81 uh, new homes for families. Some of these new homes are average about $65,000. Um, that is for a two or three bedroom unit. Um, some of these homes, you know, we're looking at, at the area around a and W. some of the home, new home costs, you know, 200 and $250,000. Rentals uh, for apartments are sometimes $950. 950 to thousand dollars. When you combine the lot rent of three hundred forty-five dollars at A and W, and you factor in the cost to, to pay down that mortgage on the um, the home, you're still less than a thousand dollars or total cost. Um, as I said earlier, a lot of the mobile home communities are transitioning from being owned from the mom and pops. You know, the first generation owners have transitioned it to the sons or grandchildren uh, and daughters, and sometimes they don't have the interest uh, to continue operating them. And that's where a group like us comes in, and we're not uncommon. Across the United States, a lot of uh, larger companies are acquiring mobile home parks, um, and some of them are owning 5,000 lots, 10,000 lots. And um, with a group like us, we can come in, we have the capital uh, to improve the park. When we first moved here, we had you know 26 homes We've already added 20 homes to the existing park. 
and these are all new homes. And if you've any of you've been through there in the last couple of years, to go there through today, it's it's night and day. Um, at this point, uh, well, well, let me go to a couple more slides. This is an example here of the exterior and the interiors of, a mo of the mobile homes that we're bringing into these communities. It's quite nice. Um, and um, this is the team, uh, the leadership team in North Carolina. Eddie Morgan, like I said, is the regional director who's here with me tonight, will speak shortly. Uh, Amber Blank, a regional manager, uh, Marla Sewell, and then Greg Oppelkamp, he heads up our, uh, the maintenance. So when there's a, a sewer break or a water line break, his team's in here fixing it, uh, or is then also setting new homes. And then when there is, um, and we move into a new community, he's taking the leadership to clean these up. At this point, Mr. Mayor, I'm gonna turn over the present, rest of the presentation to Eddie. All right, thank you. <coughs> Thank you, good evening, Mr. Mayor, council members. Good evening. Um, as Robert stated, I am the regional director for Stackhouse for this area. I do come from Yes Community. I'm sorry? State your name. Oh, sorry, Eddie Morgan. Thank you. Regional director. I do come from Yes Communities prior to starting with Stackhouse in July of last year. Um, one of the things that we really specialized was changing the word trailer park into mobile home communities. It was important with the cost of prices of houses rising in COVID to make sure that people understood that mobile homes is affordable housing. It's not a trailer park, it's a community in a neighborhood. And with that, um, you know, we did a lot of improvements when we bought this park. We made sewer repairs, water repairs, storm damage, drainage, trimmed the trees and removed the dead trees. We also repaved the entire in interior of the park area. We met with Mr. Aldred, who is one of the neighbors that it was at the adjoining property. Um, when meeting with him, me and my team went out there and we took very good notes of things that Mr. Allred was upset with when he was being the neighbor for 30, 40 years for that part. Um, one of the reasons we asked to move was so that we had time to really listen and put these things into place. And we took it very serious, my, me, myself, my team, our regional manager. Some of the things we did that were pointed out was power and, um, painting and power wash. And we hired a power wash company that's going to power wash all the homes and then determine which ones need to be painted. We also worked with Lowe's Home Improvement to get a discount price for exterior paint so that the residents don't have that large cost that we can help them with that, including with the cool seal on top of the metal roofs. We removed illegally parked cars, four-wheelers, dirt bikes, and hired a towing company. Liz Electric Towing secures the property for us at this time until we get a local tow company. We installed ring cameras for both along the fence line for Mr. Allred's property, which goes all the way down to the main road, and also to the back side of the property that's monitored 24 seven by Ring Central. We ordered a playground for the expansion area. Should be here between um, the end of April, beginning of May, and also in the expansion plans, you'll see that we added a soccer field as well for the children in the neighborhood. We monitored the police reports daily. Um, this year, uh, 2021 over 2020, we actually reduced the 911 calls coming to the area in just a minute. Retired Chief Miller will talk about that. We have confirmed that there is no sex register offenders living in or near the park. Just the reasons, you know, adding the 19 affordable houses is important. As you know, it was just last month when Salem approved a bill for $30 million to add 750 affordable housings per year for the next 10 years. We added in this year, last year, and the five that came in this year, a total of being with the new ones, the additional 19, 39, which is 5.2% of the goal that you're trying to reach with the affordable housing. So we wanna help you without spending taxpayers' money. We wanna put those affordable houses into the park ourselves and then get, get the correct tenants in there to make sure we have a great neighborhood. At this time, I'd like to introduce Mr. Uh, retired Chief Miller, sorry. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of City Council. I'm Ken Miller. I'm the president of USISS Agency in Huntersville, North Carolina, 13801 Reese Boulevard West. I'm here tonight to speak briefly about um, uh, my, my purpose in all of this was to take a look at the uh, crime and calls for service uh, numbers at that uh, park. And um, 
with 40 years in policing uh, uh, and a couple of chief stints under my belt, I understand a little bit about how to look at that, those numbers and, and the impact and whether or not uh, they would cause a problem for, uh, any rezoning would cause a problem for uh, the local police agency or, or public safety in the community. And um, uh, I reached out to uh, Winston-Salem Police Department and their crime analysis unit and received data for really the entire area, including the park, uh, everywhere from um, uh, up and down High Point Road, out Glen High, uh, some of the neighborhoods in and around there. And also um, the other location was Plaza Hollow, which was uh, I think Plaza South Apartments, uh, just in from uh, the I-40 overpass uh, toward the city. And um, I can tell you that uh, in all of uh, 2021, there were 18 calls for service inside the uh, park, uh, the A&W uh, uh, housing park right here. And um, eight of those were for loud music. Presumably, they came from within uh, the the uh, confines of the of the uh, trailer park um, because the noise just generally doesn't carry that far. Uh, there was one uh, discharge of firearm, one trespass, one communicating a threat, and two other disturbances that kind of came in over the over the course of a year. Um, <clears throat> so in my estimation, uh, the 18 calls for service, given the number of housing units there, uh, are not a crime problem uh, for the police department. And the expansion, uh, particularly given that it's owner-occupied versus renter, uh, I believe would not uh, create uh, undue burden for the police department or a problem for uh, the surrounding neighbors or even the existing residents of the community uh, because the call load is very small and the call types are very minor. And, um, and I believe that the, the uh, goal of moving uh, affordable housing that's owner-occupied uh, into the area and taking full advantage of that site uh, is actually a good goal if you can keep crime down. Uh, and it appears that uh, A and W is doing that with their site and the improvements that they've made uh, and their their policies and approach to development. Uh, with that, I'm available for any questions if you have any. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Uh, anyone have questions, Mr. Miller? May I <clears throat> Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, you referenced the crime uh, history prior to 21. Uh, could you uh, remind us what those numbers were, basically compared to what you're seeing. Like, do you have data for 1920 and for crime calls to the area? I, I don't have anything beyond one year. I received one year uh, calls for service data for the the area around and including uh, the trailer park. Just a question: Would not it, it have seemed uh, reasonable? if you're presenting data on the now, that you would have at least given us some historical data. That's just my take on it. Mm -hmm. I'm a data person. So you give me this, but you should have given me that too. So, but thank you anyway. Uh -huh. Sure, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Metro Larson. To be clear, I understand what's happening here. The homes themselves are privately owned. Is that what you said? <clears throat> Uh, yes, that's my understanding. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and the land that they sit on is that leased or is that owned by the homeowner? No, I believe it's I believe it's leased from A and W, but they can comment on that. Sorry, the land is leased, but the home is actually owned okay. by the person. So what 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 are the terms of the lease? Is it one year lease or? Is Yes, there's one one year, and then it comes up for renewal on a either 30 day month to month, or um, in this case, we only have month to month tenants there at this particular park. Um, our goal is to continue with the one year if selected, but we also leave the option of the month to month for the tenant to choose. Do you have much turnover? No, sir. We actually do not. Thank you. Any other Thank questions? Thank you. Anyone else for proponents? Thank you. We'll now hear from the <coughs> proponents. 
Uh, if you would come forward and uh, state your name and address for the record, please. I'm Steve Allred. Um, our farm backs up to the park, and I'm not against anybody. I know we need places for people to live, but um, I represent um, about five widows that's in my around my neighbors that um, they 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 would not like for it to expand. You know, I, guys have done a good job. <clears throat> they've tried to stay in touch with me with the stuff that they've done. Um, and I know it's gonna be, you know, some problems here and there. I just drove through a while ago and took some pictures of beer cans and rocks over in the pasture. And last year, we had two mares to abort after 4th of July. And I can't say that fireworks did it or whatever, but we hadn't lost any foals and all of a sudden we lose two mares aboard. The broodmare pasture backs up to the park and uh, <clears throat> it's not just me, I think it's my neighbors uh, around me that they, they do not want, they don't understand all this, they don't, and I know that this is business, and, you know, they, they're, they're dotting, they're crossing all their T's and dotting their I's, and it's, it's profit, you know, I'm aware of that. But uh, uh, we as neighbors have suffered by the, the, the neighbors that we've had, you know. But we, we you know, we've, I drove them around, showed where they cut the fence, and they was cutting the fence and rode the four-wheelers in one of my hay fields and stuff. But I think we we fixed that, and I think they addressed it. But, um, you know, <clears throat> I think it needs a little bit more time. Now, we just had, you know, we hadn't got through a 4th of July yet. So <laughs> uh, it's just, it's uh, fireworks and stuff has been bad. But they, they, they called me and said that they had hired somebody uh, during New Year's to uh, keep the fireworks down, which it was better, New Year's. But 4th of July is when it's really bad, you know. And to have animals and a horse farm this in, you know, and fireworks, it's, 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 pretty, uh, it's pretty rough for us. We turned the radio up and the lights and tried to get everybody in so that uh, the the banging doesn't bother them, you know, but but uh, you know it doesn't. But I think what they're doing is is good. You know, they've improved. But uh, like I say, I'm, I stand here for five neighbors around that can't speak. One of them's a, Ms. Mosteller's 103 in August, and her land backs up to it too, and. You know, and her daughters, I think you got a letter there from last time with her, and I just talked to her today, too. So um, it's not only just me, it's it's my neighbors that I'm speaking for. And, you know, I understand, uh, I hope you understand their position. And, uh, you know, I, I hate get, getting away of progress, but at the same time, it's been costly for us. And uh, is it going to continue? Or I think our concept is good, but uh, uh, and they are taking some, I think, some suggestions. And uh, but like I say, I'm I'm here to stand for for, for ladies that, that don't have anybody to stand for them. That's why I'm here. And I appreciate it. Okay. Thank I got another Robert. neighbor here that he anyone else like to speak to. <clears throat> Hello, Hal Richardson here. Uh, I'm just here to back Steve up and uh, just emphasize how much that uh, we do not want this, you know, and how much it means to us to have a quiet place. And well, you know, nobody wants uh, to hear motorcycles burning out fireworks, guns going off, and uh, which, you know, my wife, she's just terrified, you know, but uh, 
you already have 18 crimes. What's wrong with zero? We don't do, you know, we don't, we don't do anything. You know, there's no crime there. We don't do any crimes. I mean, why do we have to worry about 25 crimes next year, 40 crimes? Who knows? You're going to put 19 more uh, trailers in there. What's 30 people? I mean, where's these? What? We don't know who that is. So we just can't tell you how bad that. Uh, we just, we just don't, we just don't need this. I mean, uh, and I've been in business 31 years. I know about making money and all this, you know, but uh, surely there's a, another place that uh, you don't have to put so many of these in one place. I mean, can we not find another area? I think there's enough there. Can we not find another area to put these 19 or ever how many more they plan on putting? And uh, so uh, please think about us because uh, it's a beautiful place. My land backs up to Steve's. His backs up to the trailer park. And uh, we just don't want to, uh, we want any crime. Nobody wants any crime, <coughs> you know? So I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Richard. Anyone else for the opposition? All right. Um, the opponent, uh, proponents would have three minutes for a rebuttal. <clears throat> oh, it's still here. Oh, they've got to, yeah, they just have to hit the... Yeah. Uh, good evening, Robert Schunk again. And uh, who is the, which council member asked about the crime history? Good evening, ma'am. Um, I had some, I pulled some data uh, a while back um, that evidently I did not share with, with Ken. In, um, in 2019, prior to owning the park, um, it looked like there was a, uh, there were 19 call volumes um, reduced to 15 in the first year we owned and then 17 in, in last year uh, where you had 18, but the list I had was 17. Um, you know, in addition to, I want to just go back to the layout that, that Eddie skipped over. So this is the map of the community here. The area shaded out is the existing community uh, and the yellow is where the existing uh, 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 homes are in orange is where we've added uh, several more and then uh, to the south the bottom of the page there that's where I-74 the expansion is coming through so we're expanding further away from the, the property owners that have been here speaking tonight uh, and you can see the playground and the, you know, the soccer field we're proposing there um, I think you had some context on some of the crime statistics yep. of the overall area I just wanted to, um, Mayor, Member City Council, just wanted to uh, reemphasize there were not 18 crimes. Uh, there were not 17 crimes. Uh, there were a, a total of four crimes, one fraud, uh, one communicating threat, uh, one trespass, and one discharge of a firearm uh, that police responded to. Uh, again, don't know that there were charges in, in any or all of those. Um, because I don't have that data from the from the PD, uh, but those are the offenses that would be chargeable uh, if they in fact uh, discovered probable cause upon their arrival. Uh, I will say also High Point Road, as you well know, is a well-traveled road, um, and uh, uh, there can be debris uh, that's thrown from cars uh, left and right. So the littering, we we certainly would not know uh, any of the littering came from. Uh, from folks on this property who occupy this property and uh, I drove through that property today and spent some time on it. it's actually very clean uh, and surprisingly clean uh, and well kept so um, uh, realize that uh, and with all due respect uh, uh, to the folks opposing it uh, understand their perspective and their concerns uh, but there's nothing about this current site uh, or the uh, future envisioned for it uh, with the expansion uh, that should uh, generate 
the kind of concern that's been been shared with you this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, for the uh, opposition, Mr. Allred, uh, would y'all like to make a comment on the on rebuttal? You're good. Okay. Thank you very much. Do we get to ask questions? Okay. Uh, therefore, I'll close the public hearing and I'll ask the well, Mayor, if, if, yeah. if I may. Councilmember Taylor. <clears throat> I would request that we leave the public hearing open for a couple of reasons. Um, and I'm happy to have a discussion or make a motion uh, at your convenience. Okay, well, I will not close the public hearing then. And uh, Mayor Pro Tem Adams had a question. And Thank, you. Two, Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember <laughs> Taylor, for saving me. Um, I would like to ask the uh, Stackhouse uh, Management Group, <clears throat> is, are there any form or is there a form of disciplinary slash penalties for uh, offenders or repeat offenders uh, living in the community? Much like how a lease or landlord or whatever, when people continue to act out and they're not in compliance to the lease, Sure. Are there? Yes. There? So we actually have a three-page part rules and regulations that we do assess. Um, all the managers have an app on their phone to do the violations. You are given a warning to correct it. Uh, failure to do so will result in a second violation with a penalty. And if on the third violation is not completed, there's an eviction process that starts. Is there any part of your property from the site plan I've seen and the one you had up that you designate or could designate as a zone area the, that's farther away from the fence or the property on the all res area. Is yes, it? Yes, ma'am. I don't know how to bring up this map, <laughs> um, but it's it, the it, far top line there is the farmer land and then the playground and soccer is completely on the other side of the park. Okay. So the new houses are away from- That is correct, yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> I would just say, again, the affordable housing piece is good, but we live in a different world. Sure. And um, I think your uh, lease and other things, just like a government or a city, you need to use that to ensure to me that your neighbors or anybody understand that you are proactive in ensuring their safety and their quality of life. But thank you. Thank you, Mayor. All right, Councilman Mundy, did you have a question? Um, it's more of a statement. Let's hold off our statements to anybody have a question? Mr. Larson? I have a question of planning staff. Are we going to get a statement? Well, yeah, hang on just a minute. We're going to get the plan board report. All right. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you. you. I'll ask Mr. Murphy to give a report of the planning. All right, good evening, Mayor Joins, Mayor Pro Tem Adams, members of City Council. Uh, this is a zoning petition, W3482, and the petitioner is Jones Estates A&W LLC to rezone a 9.72 acre tract uh, along Glen High Road from MH and RS20 to MHS. Uh, this is the subject property highlighted in yellow. Uh, you'll notice um, the area that is currently zoned MH is the predominant area where the uh, existing manufactured home park is and the area that is RS20 is primarily the area undeveloped currently that they are proposing to uh, develop with this new request. Uh, this is again the subject property uh, outlined in yellow on the aerial photo. You'll see the concentrated uh, manu existing manufactured home park uh, and the, the vacant property is on RS-20. These are some site photos. This is the development entrance uh, from High Point Road. You'll notice the zoning sign there. This is looking into the existing developed portion of the site uh, from High Point Road. This is the Southeast Suburban Area Plan update. The subject property is shown uh, with the label there, and if you'll notice, the majority of the property that is being requested to be rezoned is 
recommended as a manufactured housing development. The only portion of the property that isn't shown and labeled as such is the property that was the existing single family home. And the single family home um, uh, that is part of this request wasn't included in the manufactured home recommendation again because it was an existing single family home. And I don't believe at the time it was in the same ownership as the balance of the property. So again, the, the area plan does recommend the majority of the site to be, re, uh, to be uh, zoned for manufactured housing uh, development. This is the site plan. The uh, mint green area is the area uh, for expansion. The uh, sort of orange area is the area of the existing manufactured home park. Uh, there are existing, uh, there were 51 units and the proposed expansion is for an additional 19. In summary, the area plan does recommend manufactured housing for the majority of the site. Uh, it is consistent with legacy and the area plan and that it would increase affordable housing opportunities within the area. Uh, staff does not anticipate any transportation related issues with this request because the uh, increase in the number of units, I believe only would result in maybe another 100 trips per day on a road that has excess capacity. This was heard by the planning board at their June 10th, 2021 public hearing. There were no speakers in opposition there. The planning, did, the planning board did vote 9-0 to recommend approval of this request to council. And as was heard uh, with the introduction of the item uh, by the city clerk, uh, this item has been continued three previous times to give the uh, petitioner time to work with the property owners uh, to resolve their issues. That I'll be glad to answer any questions. Larson, you have a question? Yes, thank you. Um, it's a fairly dense plan, site plan, for the number of units that are there. I'm kind of surprised we do not have an ordinance that allows for uh, buffer zones in this particular development. We don't seem to have any any planting uh, to buffer the area. Is that, is that correct? Uh, if you'll notice, and I don't have, uh, all the only thing I have pulled up here is the, is the plan that is shown um, on shown here I don't have the site plan pulled up but I can actually go back to their document where it does show right yeah there, there is a buffer around um, around the uh, proposed I'm not sure why this isn't well probably because I didn't X out of the other one why isn't this pulling the show up let's see To answer your question, Councilman, so I can't get their slide to pull up. The, uh, th there is a buffer that is located around the perimeter of the uh, proposed park, except where you have the road, the, the proposed driveway. And keep in mind, the future I-74 corridor adjoins uh, where their, their drive is. But there is a, a, a landscape area across the front of the property and along that uh, eastern border. I see a lot of perimeter roads, but I don't see as any plantings. Could you pull up the dot cam? You have the buffer area that's shown here, and then you have the proposed road that is going back to, to these units, and then you have the future I-74 corridor. Murphy, is, is there an actual ordinance zoning requirement for buffering these kinds of developments? Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm seeing that. I'm just trying to figure out why there's nothing in this location. Mr. Mayor, yes. while he's looking for that, I'd just like to remind City Council that we normally don't receive information regarding calls for service and crime and things like that because that's not really a land use factor. That's not a land use issue. So Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Keep Council. that in mind. So what are we waiting on? Um, what's the question that's not being answered? So Larson, do you have other questions or? No, I was just, I just wanted, it was a question of ordinance, buffers, buffer ordinances. I mean, Councilmember Larson, all I can tell you is that basically whenever we went through the site plan review process, we ensured it met the requirements. I can't sit here and tell you that, you know, wh where, where the buffering is required, but they are showing buffering on the plan and our staff reviewed it and it was deemed to be in compliance with the ordinance. Um, I don't have the ordinance in front of me right now, but I can certainly get you that information. I, it sounds like the item might be continued, but I'm not 100% sure. Um. <laughs> All right, Mr. Larson, do you have any other questions? Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, Council Member uh, Mundy? Okay. And then Council Member Scipio. And mine is not a question, just to Okay, well, could go let Mr. Um, uh, Council Member Scipio ask a question, please? Okay. Um, just a very quick question. How long has this park been in that neighborhood, in that location, the original one? Uh, since I, I don't have that information. It's, it's currently zoned MH, and it's been that way at least since the, the conversion of the UDO, but it sounds like it's been there since the 40s or 50s. For a very long time. Um, and is there any fencing that separates the... Um, manufactured home units from the adjoining neighbors? I believe it would be uh, Mr. Allred's fence. It's just one. So there is no requirement for a fence. You could have a fence as part of a buffer option, but of course the existing manufactured home was developed prior to there being any buffering requirements. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, just another comment. I just like the fact that the um, Stackhouse group is putting in amenities for the children places for them to play, the soccer field and the playground. I think that's a very good amenity to add. Thank you. Mr. Mundy, I know you have comment. I, I want to wait till we get a motion to see if we do it, and then we'll get back to you, Mr. Just a real quick question. Is there going to be an interchange on High Point Road from 74? Anybody know? I do not know based on the... It looks like from the map that there will be one from... The bypass to 74. I'm just curious. So. I do not know. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Any other uh, comments, questions for Mr. Murphy? All right. Thank you, Ms. Murphy. Um, Councilman Taylor, I'm going to turn to you and see if you want to get a motion on the floor or. Okay. Yeah, Mayor, I'm going to make a comment, then a motion. All right. Um, as a native son of this community, uh, the one that we're talking about. I'm very excited to see that our city is growing and expanding. It's something that's very important to me. As we put more amenities in our community, there are more people who are going to want to come and live in our neighborhoods. Um, the city council, as you as you know, because you voted on it, we put $30 million aside for affordable housing. So we know that we need to provide quality affordable housing for the people who are living in our communities. But we also have to take in consideration the needs, the wants, the desires, and the safety of the neighbors. Um, as you know, we continued this case a few times last year because we wanted the uh, the uh, petitioner to get with the neighbors to see if we couldn't hammer out a compromise. Um, I can say that A&W has done an excellent job with keeping their word and trying to work with the neighbors. But as you can see, members of the council, mayor, we're, we're not quite where we want to be yet. Um, we don't typically do this, but it would be my motion uh, one last time to attempt to continue this case. Uh, so I, it would be my motion that we continue item Z1 until May the 2nd leave the public hearing open to allow one more opportunity for the neighbors to get with the developer to see if we can't come forward with the compromise. We need the housing, but we need the neighbors, and we got to find a way to marry them both uh, responsibly. Second. So the motion is to continue to May 2nd. Uh, second. Second. Second to that. Thank you. Discussion? All right. All those in favor, we will, we'll, that'll come up, and we'll vote to, on that to continue to May 2nd. So what's on our screen now is we're voting for the continuation. What you're voting on now is just a continuation until May 2nd. Thank you very much. Um, 
motion passes seven to one. I'm going to recognize Councilman Mundy. Please go ahead with your comment. Um, I, I agree that you know um, the housing shortage is, is is actually a crisis that we have to address. Um, however, I understand the concern about the noise. And we as a city need to do a better job. If you gentlemen can hear fireworks, they are illegal. We do not enforce our own ordinances and we need to start that. Even when, I'm not even sure if it's the fire or the police department, even when we had a fully staffed um, public safety, we were not addressing that. We have veterans with PTSD. It's dangerous for domesticated animals. I did not realize it could be dangerous for livestock. But a few, a handful of people who are using fireworks, probably not the entire park, but the handful who are in the park and in my neighborhood and in your neighborhood, we need to stop that. And I think that would address a large part of your concerns with respect to the noise. Thank you. Councilman I don't Clark. know the answer. Okay. Just, <laughs> I can identify the problem. Very good. Thank you. Councilman Clark. Yes. Uh, for the first time in 22 years sitting on this council, I did not vote for a continuation. We get paid to make tough decisions. This thing's been continued. We're going on eight or nine months. I think it's time for us to get to, to earn our salaries and to vote however we wish to vote, Mr. Taylor. Right, thank you, Councilman McClure. Well, we have continued this to May yes. uh, 2nd. Mr. Allred, it'll come back to before the council, and it, it sounds like Councilmember Taylor's going to be working on trying to work out something there. So we do have a need uh, before, to go into closed session, but before I do, I'm going to recognize Councilmember Scipio for a brief comment. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and, and colleagues, and to our citizens. On Saturday, our Winston-Salem Police Department had a significant finding in a cold case, a missing person cold case from 2006, 16 years. We discovered a car that was in Winston Lake. Um, and when I went to the scene, one of the things I wanted to share with our, my council members, we have phenomenal resources. Our Winston-Salem Police Department, the Medical Examination Examiner's Department, our Forensic Unit did a phenomenal job looking through that wreckage, recovering it and looking through it. But today, for most of the day, we recovered three vehicles that had been abandoned in Winston Lake also. Um, I'm always disappointed when people think that they can use our public parks and lakes um, to get rid of things like that in such beautiful environments as our lake. However, what was phenomenal about that day or today was to see our Winston-Salem Police Department, our Winston-Salem Fire Department, the partnership and collaboration they have with High Point Fire Department and Louisville Fire Department and our emergency management team. It was phenomenal. On behalf of the citizens of Winston-Salem Council members, I thank you for making it possible for monies to, be have, to have been expended on the equipment, the trucks, all of the special equipment, the training for our personnel, phenomenal. We are getting our money's worth in that kind of investment. I thank you all as we continue to equip our public safety departments with the right stuff to do the right thing for our residents. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mayor. Councilman we do have a need to go into closed session and recognize Councilman Clark for a motion, if you Thank would. Thank you, Mayor. I move that the once Salem City Council go into closed session pursuant to North, North Carolina General Statute 143-31811A3 and A5 to consult with and provide instructions to the city attorney and staff regarding Forsyth County versus Global Hospitality Management Group Incorporated 18 CVD 4304, a tax foreclosure action involving property located at 713 East 16th Street and to protect the attorney-client privilege. And I make that as a motion, Mayor. Thank second. You. Is there a motion and a second? Uh, this will come up for a vote or? Yeah, it will. So we would vote for the closed session. And if uh, folks would excuse us, we'll go into closed session here. We'll, we'll stay here, folks. Oh, we're gonna stay? Yeah, we stay. They're going to leave us. Oh. <laughs>
used to go. Uh,